Isn't this a beautiful morning to be together? Yes. My name is Pete Peterson, and I welcome you, uh, all of you who are here in person, to and for all of you up there watching online. Welcome to the First Congregational Church of Eugene. Whoever you are, whomever you love, wherever you find yourself on your journey, you're truly welcome here. If you're new to First Congregational Church and would like more information about our ministries, please fill out one of those little blue cards that should be in front of you in the, the pew, in the pew rack. Uh, you can just put it in the offering plate, that'd be fine. Or if you want to go online, fill out a simpler form, that'd be fine as well. We're at FCCUG.org. There are many opportunities uh, for a service and connection listed in this morning's bulletin. I'd like to just point out a few of them. Um, healing Conversations will continue in July. That's um, uh, an opportunity uh, for you to meet and talk with folks about uh, whatever's on your mind. Uh, they're held in the chapel, but please let us know in advance. Uh, you can sign up online. The music, summer music, or I should say the All Summer, All Comers Choir will, <laughs> will perform in July, July 16th at 9 o'clock. You don't have to have any experience of music. You don't even have to show up for rehearsal. Just uh, show up at 9 o'clock here in the sanctuary. Uh, Wednesday Night Connections will begin in a summer kind of style. Um, sign up again on the east, which is right outside the door here to the, to the north decks. Um, gluten free. And one more item. Um, we have a very low-tech suggestion box there in the entry to the artifacts. And we would truly like your, your ideas. Um, Pride is coming on August 12th. And this congregation for decades has had a major presence there at the festival. We want to welcome people. Let them, we don't proselytize. But we say anyone who's interested welcome here. So if you have ideas on how we can best describe our congregation's welcoming and affirming attitude for all people, you can fill out the little rip-off form in the bulletin, or maybe fill out a form right there on the table and drop it in the box. Thank you again. Blessings to all of you this morning. Sierra Service Project participants. So I'm delighted that we can commission them together as a congregation and send them off. Let us hear first these words from the Apostle Paul. At all times, make it your aim to do good to one another and to all people. Be joyful always. Pray at all times. Be thankful in all circumstances. This is what God wants of you in your life in Christ Jesus. Do good to all people, be joyful, grateful, and walk in the Spirit. This is what Sierra Service Project is all about. As our young people leave this morning for Crescent City, California, we remember that they go to serve in a region where people have been systemically oppressed for generations. We remember that some of those they will serve are members of the Talawadani Nation, and some of those include descendants of the Talawa, Wyatt, Yurik, and Hupa. And so we seek God's blessing on the many hands serving, that we might do so recognizing that our own liberation is bound up with all of our siblings. You may have even seen it on one of Mary's, Mary Nyquist Coon's banners. It bears a quote from an Australian Aboriginal rights group. If you have come here to help me, you are wasting your time. But if you have come because your liberation is bound up with mine, then let us work together. Our Ohana youth go to serve alongside their siblings to gain an experiential based understanding of what it means that all of our liberation is bound up with all of our siblings and with all of creation. These Sierra Service Project opportunities have become a sacred tradition here at FCC, a ministry of service and being served that we have participated in for well over a decade now. 
and you're all a part of it. Whether you co-led a trip, I wonder if you might, can you stand up if you've led a trip before with SSP? I just want to be able to look at this. You see, this is what it takes for So whether you co-led a trip or participated in the project, helped us get to the work site and back, gave a donation, came to our ice cream fundraiser, held us up through your prayers, or maybe you're just learning about this this morning and you're sending us your positive energy. Either way, you're all a part of the SSB community. We thank you with deep gratitude for joining the circle, for recognizing that our liberation is bound up together. Let us also recall the words of the prophet Isaiah, who writes in 6 a. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. This year, 15 of our people lifted their hands and said, Here am I, send me. Or at least they lifted a pinky finger. <laughs> As you hear your name, I invite you to please come up front and stand here on the chancel together as a group so we can bless you together. Our adult chaperones are Scott Detmer, Devin Holmgren, and Jim Roloff. Let me just say this trip would not happen without their bravery. <laughs> young adults as well. This year, a really dynamite group, seriously, people. It's ranging in age from 12 to 18, and just each one of these youth um, are just incredible kids. Um, I'm going to read off the names, and as I read the names, if you'll please come forward and stand in front of your fearless leaders here. <laughs> Miles Detmer, Fran Gill, Gail Gomsrud, Marin Ho, Ryko Holmgren, Vesna Holmgren, Joran Lindbergh, Thomas Parzhahovsky, Julia Roloff, Kate Starlin, Scarlett Travis, and last but certainly not least, Stone Travis. <laughs> He's our rock. <laughs> Dad jokes get used to them. They're SSP. This summer, our team here will rotate through community-based environmental projects, including forest thinning and invasive removal with Elk Valley Rancheria, the Talawa Dune Stewards, and the Redwood National and State Parks. Other projects they'll be involved with include building an accessible pathway in the College of the Redwoods Food Forest, working in community gardens and on light construction projects like building wheelchair ramps and fixing roofs. And they'll also work with the Uruk Food Sovereignty Program. This is service learning at its best. So let us all rise now in body or in spirit and join in commissioning these servants through our call to worship. You might even put a hand up to send some blessing and positive energy to these fine people. We give thanks for the lives and gifts of our young people and leaders. We celebrate their generosity of spirit and affirm their calling to go out as light for the world. There are
May you be both blessed and a blessing, and your journey be one of rich abundance. Guiding and loving God, empower these people to be your hands and feet. Help them to glorify you by serving others. By their actions and words, make them witnesses of your great love and your passion for abiding with your people. Protect them, teach them, and support them as they become the people you want them to be. Fill them with the Holy Spirit and enable them to complete their tasks faithfully and joyfully. Bring them safely home, and then let their experiences further enrich us, so that we too may glorify you by walking in your way of love. Amen. If you please remain standing, we're going to sing them right on out of the sanctuary to I Am the Light of the World, and we'll sing verses 2, 3, and 4. You guys can take off on verse 4 if you want to return to the pew, that's fine. Thank you. Scripture passage today is from the Psalms, Psalm 33, the first three verses. This is from the message version of Scripture. Good people cheer God. Right living people sound best when praising. Use guitars to reinforce your hallelujahs. Play divine praise on a grand piano. Compose your own new song to the Holy One. Give God a trumpet fanfare. For the word of God in scripture, 
for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Well, summer seems like a good time to talk about play, don't you think? <laughs> Apparently it's not um, a, a law that you can only use summer for play, but it seems like a good time. So this morning I'd like to begin a two Sunday inquiry with you, and it's a simple inquiry. Why play? How can play be a guiding star for us, an integral practice to a vital life of person and community, one that leads to justice and joy, to wisdom and grace, the life abundant. Now, years ago, a church I served was awarded a sabbatical grant from the clergy renewal program of the Lilly Foundation. Each sabbatical grant requires a theme, a focus, that would be good for the pastor and the congregation. Now, our chosen theme back then was play. So I did some reading on play, isn't that funny? I did some reading on play. <laughs> some experiential study with Interplay, a nonprofit based in Oakland. I did some electric guitar lessons, some mountain hiking and camping, and had a month long trip with family to Hawaii. The deeper question we were exploring was if play is more than for the purpose of distraction or temporary relief, is there more? The late UCC pastor and a mentor to me, Bruce Ingalls, was the one who let me know that theologian Jürgen Moltmann explored such a possibility in his work, A Theology of Play. In it, Moltmann explores how play is essential to our lives and to the coming of the new creation for which God longs. Moltmann said, we must learn to distinguish between the alienated forms of merely apparent good fortune and the liberating forms of enjoyment. It is possible that in playing, we can anticipate our liberation and with laughing, rid ourselves of the bonds which alienate us from real life. Liberating forms of enjoyment that anticipate our liberation. Real life. That sounds good to me. So Moltmann is claiming that play can serve the sacred purpose of realizing vitality and liberation. And Moltmann knows that this claim about play can be confusing. For those of faith who deeply care about what seems often a sad and serious world so obviously out of step with God's intention of goodness. Moltmann captures a voice I know I have when he says, but, but how can we laugh? How can we rejoice without care when we are worried, depressed, and tortured by the state of the world in which we live? Is it right to laugh? to play and to dance without at the same time crying out and working for those who perish on the shadowy side of life. My hunch is that play is somehow, strangely, a neglected guiding star, a guide for me and for the high-minded church, especially when we pursue the social gospel and rely so much on the serious prophetic proclamation of the moral and the right. My concern is that we are drawn into an exhausting conventional fight with the external and the internal grace-less powers and principalities, drawn into the same game of winners and losers, of fault-finding, of calling people out rather than inviting them in of getting power over, of being overzealously righteous, of becoming puritanical in the cause, of limiting ourselves to the known and to the ego's efforts of convention. My hopeful invitation here is to play so that 
our foot soldier moral effort is transformed. That it becomes infused, enthused, and enlightened with the aesthetic of the beauty and heart of God's vision. That we, like our children, engage not in a Christian military march, but rather in a Lord of the Dance step to make our way in whatever kind of wilderness we find ourselves in. In other words, play is meant to be part of what energizes our resilience in life and allows us to be an Easter people. An Easter people who keep on keeping on and building community and doing justice, no matter the situation. Anyone here know the name Romaine Patterson? Not even one? Well, you might not be from Laramie, Wyoming. <laughs> Romaine Patterson was a friend of Matthew Shepard's, who was murdered in Laramie in 1998. Romaine was shocked by the hate of the Westboro Baptist protesters who came to Matthew's funeral. When the trials occurred months later, she was ready for them. With her inspiration, she and others stood by in giant angel costumes, complete with giant angel wings to shield family and friends from the view of those ugly and hateful words that those Westboro lost souls put on signs and tried to project. Now if Romaine had only been in the heavy and serious mold of the moral foot soldier, that moral foot soldier style of resistance, she might have thought to turn up at the Albany County Courthouse and outshout those misguided protesters to beat them at their game. Instead, she wanted to play a different game. A smarter game in this case because the Westboro people love controversy and opposition. They feed off of it. Romaine's creative, even playful strategy of angelic blocking and simply ignoring the Westboro folks was more service to the spirit and to the good and to those hurting families and friends. I want to practice a love like that. To practice a playful, angelic creativity like that that was seen in Laramie that day. I want to be in a different mode of energy that is more life-giving and they're more, therefore more sustainable in expressing a peace and justice witness. I'm working on it. I've got a ways to go. How about you? Moltmann suggests that creative play and imagination indeed helps us sustain and be smart in our change efforts, especially when faced with the forces and faces of fear. Says Moltmann, the power of the powerless lies in such liberations from fear, in their laughter at the expense of deified rulers who are nothing after all but dialed up Dwarfs. All liberation movements begin with a few people who are no longer afraid and who begin to act differently than expected by those who are threatening them. Acting differently than expected. No longer afraid. <coughs> Sounds like freedom to me. In addition to a kind of resilience and freedom from the old games and limits, I think play has the potential to deepen our community building and connection. Now I mentioned I did some study with this nonprofit in Oakland called Interplay that had been there for decades. It came out of a, a movement of, you know, so that spontaneous improv world. Cynthia trained in seminary and so did Phil. They're brilliant at what they do. And they've nurtured a wonderful community of play, 
play that serves the good, that serves liberation. They've been doing it so long, they're handing it off to the next generation of folks worldwide. They said this, some think that the answer to the question, will you play with me, may be more important than the answer to the question, do you love me? Play with me, and I know that I belong. Our willingness to play tells the truth about our desire to be ourselves with someone. Now, you might remember a delightful connection to others when you were in a time of unself-conscious play. Maybe you were quite young. Maybe it's been a long time. Maybe not. Can you recall that feeling, what that's like? I think there's something about that shared free expression and that kind of play that generates energized connecting, that generates light and love. Now, in part, I know this from its opposite, from being myself a too serious athlete in my life, taking myself too seriously in these matters. Whether baseball or football or skiing or even squash, I found always, often in retrospect, that too much anxiety, too much gripping, too much force on each shot or movement was actually counterproductive, not to mention exhausting. There's some aspect here of letting go that allows play, of being more at ease with the self that liberates, of being more in the spirit of free play that can actually help even in the midst of life's heavy intensity. There is an energy and lightness that can come with playful connection to others. We might ask it this way, how can we be Christ light on our feet? Did you get that? That was a little joke. <laughs> how can we be Christ light on our feet? And in our play with each other and with the world as it is, so that we can be more effective, resilient, and vital even when life is intense. Play, delight, dance, freedom, flow, adventure, song, praise. These are some of the qualities of the Holy Spirit when it is fully alive, when it trusts in the divine creation. As Psalm 33 does, good people cheer God, right living people sound best when praising. Use guitars to reinforce your hallelujahs, play divine praise on a grand piano, compose your own new song to the Holy One, give God a trumpet fanfare. In writing the lyrics to Lord of the Dance in 1967, English poet, songwriter, and musician Sidney Carter was inspired partly by Jesus. Certainly, but also partly by a statue of the Hindu god Shiva. The Hindu god Shiva in a dancing pose. He later stated, I did not think the churches would like it at all. I thought many people would find it pretty far flown, probably heretical and anyway dubiously Christian. But in fact, people did sing it, and unknown to me, it touched a chord. Anyway, it's the sort of Christianity I believe in. Me too. We'll sing that song before our worship is complete today. But for now, let's be in a spirit of celebration and prayer with our bodies. You can hear me? Yeah. 
order. creating still. Help us to move with you as you continue the holy play of creating life, the sacred play of evolving life. Call us forward into the dance that is real life, that is joy and justice, that is the divine beauty and balance of creation. Inspire in us the delight that is life-giving, the wonder that expands, and the openness that allows us to receive divine love and light, that allows us to meet the life-denying principalities and powers with resilience and creativity that leads toward your beloved community. Great Spirit, we know that we often miss the mark. Forgive us and call us back. Come close and send us as your channels of grace. Your channels of grace to be with ourselves and others as we experience the pain of the body, the struggle of the mind, and the woundedness of the heart. May those struggling, those grieving, those hurting and alienated know of your presence amidst all of it, closer than the breath, nearer than the heart. We offer up now those, those names, those people that we know that are in that place. Like Karen,
like Rose, Martha Moultrie's sister. So many, Spirit. And may blessing come to those who are close to them and caretaking them. Bless those who are on the road right now to the Sierra Service Project. And bless all of us in discerning your call and choosing to follow love into service. Spirit, meet us now wherever we are. And we lift up now in silence the prayers we each hold. We release these prayers to you now, God, in celebration and in trust of the divine play in which we move, we offer these prayers. receive our morning offering. Receive the gift of a breath 
and gift of earth. We dedicate these offerings to ministries of joy and justice, so that all may share in the blessings of life. Amen. And now I invite you, in that spirit of joy and play, to rise in body or spirit and sing together as printed in the bulletin, Lord of the Dance.
keeping the movement moving. So go now and open yourself to sacred play. Trust in the Creator, Christ, and the Holy Spirit to move you on that dance. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 